Um, I just want to take you through a timeline synopsis, and then Sarah and John will take you through an overview of the application process, how to initiate an application online, and the supplemental forms and steps. So um, on February 24th, we're going to begin accepting applications online. You initiate the application online. There really isn't any reason to come to our office on February 24th. If you come to our office, we're going to hand you a little card that says, go apply online. So um, you need to start that application. We're not going to have any kiosks or anything like that at the office where you can do it there. So you really need to start sort of out wherever you are. And then um, on April 27th, we're going to have a marijuana control board meeting in Anchorage. At that meeting, we expect the course, the course, any course applications uh, for the marijuana handler permit education course to be approved by the board. So we're not going to be able to take on online applications or any applications for handlers permits until May 12th. That's to give people a couple of weeks to take the course, that any course that's approved by the board on April 27th. <clears throat> May 23rd is the date that the marijuana inventory control uh, tracking system is going to be implemented. And we're still in the protest period for that bid, so we're not going to discuss that today. Um, June 9th is going to be the meeting in Anchorage where we expect the board to issue the first cultivation and testing licenses. So we're going to take applications for all four types of licenses, uh, actually all six types of licenses, uh, beginning on February 24th. But the only license applications will be moving through to completion for the June 9th meeting, consideration by the board at the June 9th meeting, are those for testing and cultivation facilities. The reason for that was discussed at the board meeting last week. And that is because a retail store and a product manufacturing facility cannot comply with the regulations until we have some legally grown crops of marijuana for them to produce or sell. And so um, that is a, a, it is a plant, and so that is a process. Some time has to pass for those uh, crops to reach their ready point. And then we'll have a meeting in early July where the board will continue to approve cultivation and testing licenses. So those are brought in batches to the board, uh, depending on the timing of the process, as you'll see when Sarah and John take you through that. And then in September, our expectation is to have a meeting the first week of September, approximately 90 days, perhaps a little less than 90 days, past the June 9th meeting, where the board will approve the first retail and product manufacturing licenses. And then finally, we'll have one last board meeting in Anchorage in December, sometime probably the very first week of December, and the board will continue to approve. So when you look at these timelines, it's really important to remember that this is not a race. There's no window where we're taking applications. There's nothing closing. There's no limits on the number of licenses the board can issue. and uh, when you look at that timeline, if you recall, the statute says the board is going to approve or deny an application within 90 days of it being submitted. We have a similar timeline on the alcohol side. And there's a couple of things you need to realize about that. First of all, <clears throat> the regulations say that the beginning of that timeline is a completed application. So you're going to be doing some work on your applications before they're complete, and the timeline doesn't start ticking until your application is complete. Second of all, um, the board meetings aren't going to line up perfectly with all of your applications. You don't have to worry about that. If you come to an alcoholic beverage control board meeting and watch carefully and listen carefully, you'll understand how an all-volunteer board that meets five times a year manages to um, keep with those timelines. There's a tool that they have called delegation that enables them to look at mostly complete applications. And if the next board meeting is going to be too far out from the date of your completed application, I'll let Sarah and John go into that a little bit more. But the thing to keep in mind is that is that there isn't going to be a situation where if you don't get your application in on February 24th, something terrible is going to happen. There, it, 
if you apply on February 24th, if you apply on March 1st, if you apply on March 11th, all of those applications are theoretically going to end up at the same board meeting, okay? So what you need to be thinking about as a potential applicant is, when am I going to be ready, okay? If you're not going to be ready within 90 days of the date you begin your application, you should ask yourself why you're starting it now because you're going to set off eventually a timeline for us and we're going to have the expectation that you were ready. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is, and uh, this is up on our FAQs, a lot of people ask me, what's the first thing I need to think about when I'm applying for a license? These are premises-based licenses. No one is going to get a license and pick it up and walk around town with it and say here or here. You have to know where before you start. So if you're not ready, don't start. Nothing will happen if you don't start except that you will start when you're ready right? There's no window that's closing. It's not a race. And so you, you, you need to have your stuff together and be ready and sort of be within 90 days of being ready to go at the time when you apply. So thank you very much for your attention. I'm going to turn it over and uh, have a good training. <laughs>